So, my name is Tapi McGonagall from uh, Modern Marketing. Basically, what we do, we cover news on branding products, technology, and campaign across different marketing and branding industries. So, uh, welcome, Spiff, to our Modern Marketing Online Industry Interview segment. Would you please kindly introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Stephanie Kirk. I am a CD at Gray um, on the, the style business. Um, yeah. All righty. So, let's shoot right straight to it. So just please describe in short why you got into this advertising industry and your main career positions held and the highlights thereof. So actually I got into advertising out of sheer rebellion. Um, it's exactly what my dad didn't want me to do. <laughs> okay. um, you know, I, I started off studying business science at UCT. I was, I was clever in maths and science, so I never actually considered myself to be creative. Oh. Um, in those days, back then, 1928, you know, um, you were either <laughs> either creative or clever. So it, it it never occurred to anyone that it might be a viable field for me. So um, I kind of stumbled into it out of a, an act of rebellion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. wanting to just do something different. Oh, okay. So. Uh, so you just got in it because of that rebellious nature. So what would you say were your main career positions, your highlights of your career when you actually started and climbing? Yeah. So um, I went to Red and Yellow School of Advertising and still mm -hmm. going and um, uh, oh. got my internship um, when I was 20. So I've been in the industry for about 20 years and um, I've been lucky enough to work with all the amazing agencies. So Ogilvy Cape Town, I then went to Jupiter Drawing Room for about four or five years, hmm. Low Bull, Ogilvy, um, and most recently um, Hans and now Gray. And um, I guess ugh, there's been so many highlights if I look back over the 20 years. Um, but I think the most recent highlight will have to be um, the work we did for City Lodge. So City Lodge Radio, the real cast, mm. um, this year um, and last year was the first um, Benak or Zulu uh, radio spot that won at Cannes and DNA DN1 show. Oh. So it was just, um, yeah, it was really cool. It's really cool because yeah. it proved to everyone, and I think the doors are now open, that mm. um, if the human truth is universal, you can write in any language and and south africa you know we've got so many rich cultural nuances we can unpack and it's completely unique to us so i'm very that was a really 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 um like good moment i think you know mm. all right that's great so while we're still touching on that what have you enjoyed most about working in the advertising industry what I love most about working in advertising, and I think that, and there's a lot to love because I think at times it's a love-hate relationship. You're like, oh, I don't know why. So why am I still doing this, you know? But um, the truth is that in our industry, we get to work with amazing people, with people who are mm -hmm. smart and passionate and they're um, natural problem solvers. And, there's such magic when, when you, you get to work with all these different ex experts in their field, especially when it comes to production or making a film or making an ad and how everyone pulls together for a common cause or a common product. And I just, I, I, I love that part of my job, you know. I'm just amazed about, with the talent out there. And, um, and I guess the, the, the truth is that, you know, no two days are entirely the same, except mm now in COVID where almost every day is <laughs> yeah. um, but it wasn't always like that you know mm. yeah oh okay so what would you say um in as much as you enjoyed working in the industry and being a part of it for over 20 years what important industry related changes have you noticed over the period of time you've been a part of this advertising industry I'm going to answer that in two parts because I think since the time I started, which was uh, in 2000, right? Oh, so at that stage, yes, advertising was like crazy. It was um, this culture of like, you know, like 
long lunches and um, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I think that's why a lot of us actually <laughs> come into the industry. And um, over the years, with the rise of holding companies, you know, the culture has definitely changed. It's mm. a lot more corporate um, and a lot more um, business-like in a sense. And I think, and I think there's some good parts and bad parts. The good part is, um, you know that myth of you have to be self-destructive or you have to uh, be wild to be creative. Um, it, it was really a dangerous one. I mean, I, I myself ended up in recovery and I'm still in recovery. I'm 10 years sober. And, and that for me um, is a big change. Thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm glad it's changed because self-destruction is not really that fashionable anymore. And I've also seen people a lot more willing to step in and and say something if they see someone's in trouble because I think I've seen so much young talent come in and then blow out before they've even started and um, mm. that's a fallacy you know yeah. um, um, so I'm, 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 I don't think I ever thought I would say this but yeah I, I'm actually happy with that change so culturally it has changed. Okay, no, um, sense, it yeah. doesn't mean we're boring. It just means <laughs> we're perhaps a little bit more tempered. Um, and then, you know, but, and the industry has changed so much in, in those 20 years. Transformation, we've seen it come through. It's not, it's not where it needs to be. It's, it's, it's kind of too slow. Okay. Um, but I can honestly say that the young black talent in the last decade um, it's just been amazing to see the growth. The talent's there. It's just now we have to like nurture them and to make sure they get to the next level um, to get into management positions um, and to, you know, to really drive that agenda. And I think we'll have a responsibility to like help and nurture and support and encourage. Um, and um, I've always worked in, a, in, a, in, in places or I guess I've taken it for granted that there were always a lot of females around. You know, I've worked with some people and I do work for some great women and I've always have. And so when I was a younger creative, I thought it was much more um, equal in the representation because all my peers were also girls. Yeah. Um, but as you climb the ranks, you kind of go, hey, where are all the girls at? So, <laughs> Where are um, all the girls? <laughs> what? Okay. But yeah, and I think we've lost a lot of female talent to, um, to you know, immigration. And, and, and uh, that's something we need to be aware of. And, and um, yeah, we've still got a lot of work to do in, on, on that front. All right. So it's great that you are seeing transformation, even if those are at a slow pace. So um, I just want to ask you, what is it that you like doing when you are actually not working? So what are your interests? What are your hobbies? So basically, what can you tell us about yourself? So basically, um, when I'm not working, which is very rare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but I, actually, I, I really enjoy... Um, traveling so i do uh if it's not COVID 19 i i i used to plan big trips one a year you know um i actually really enjoy doing nothing i think because my <laughs> my job is so people intensive mm -hmm. um i if i have some downtime i really enjoy just just chilling out uh watching a good series mm. um you know yeah so um, I'm also uh, an amateur cat photographer. Um, I, yeah, I'm, my cat has an Instagram account. Um, oh. And uh, those who know me know that Moses is, a, um, you know, my esteemed colleague. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoy writing. I enjoy making things. I enjoy taking photographs. Mm. Yeah. So you're a photographer? like no not by any long time i have no idea what i'm doing but i enjoy doing <laughs> but you're doing it <laughs> i enjoy pretending that i know what i'm doing when i'm done with no it at all great so um <laughs> what was the last place that you visited since well obviously now this year the, history. The, la the last place i visited was um new york actually oh, uh, yes. last year 
and that was really amazing. It was probably the best city I've ever visited. I don't know what took took me so long uh, to get there. Um, I always thought I was like more of a European girl, like that's more my vibe, but it was a really, really good holiday. Great energy. And, and the thing about New York is um, when you travel, even if it's your first time, it feels familiar because you've seen it so many times in films oh, and movies okay. and, and in popular mm-hmm. culture. So it was like, I know this place, but I didn't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So what do you think is the key to being successful in the advertising industry? I think, and I've thought about this, and I think um, the key to being successful in advertising is just to, it is actually just resilience. It's sticking it out, and it's rolling with the punches and showing up. It really is. It's not an easy industry. We know that. Um, but it, the people who are successful are the people who can stick it out and ride it out. Um, there are uh, many peaks and many valleys. There are great, great moments and there are crashing disappointments and everything in between. And just knowing um, that you need to just go with it and you need to ride it out and you, and you can't give up. Um, and then I realized as a creative, mm. I only realized this recently with the last two years, the awards run we've had. And yes. it's actually when I realized that the idea is one part. I, a good idea is one part of the, the job, right? Mm-hmm. It's, you have to package it and you have to know how to package it for the clients, for the consumers, and for the awards juries. Um, and once you realize that, it suddenly like all makes sense. And, and it's like, Oh, so the idea is actually only about 60% of the process. The, the other 40% is how you, how you pull it all together and how you present it to the world. Um, so, yeah. Oh, all right. Thank you for that advice. So you did mention what your favorite campaign was. Um, and you said it was one of those, it was a Zulu written campaign. Would you was just like to just revisit the idea, maybe tell us about the execution of the campaign and how it was executed, basically. Um, so um, the real cost um, was a radio campaign for City Lodge hotels. And the insight was that, um, you know, in tough economic times, we all kind of stay with our friends and our family because we believe it's, it's free. Um, mm. But the, the truth is it's never free. It's actually quite you pay for that trip in, in other ways, um, in mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Um, you know, it's, it's never free. It comes at a cost. So the, the whole insight was that um, a room at City Lodge is probably cheaper than free. Um, it's, unpacked, <laughs> it's unpacked kind of all the human truths about going home and staying with your parents for a holiday. And we did English spots. And we did Zulu spots at the same time. And, the, you know, it worked in both languages and in both cultures. Because even though, um, you know, half the team um, holiday at Cape St. Francis with their parents and half the team go home um, to KZN, um, it was the same story, actually. Mm-hmm. You go home and you have to um, put up with your relatives and your weird uncle and your crazy aunt and you have to cook and clean and, and, and pay your <laughs> yeah so so it it was a really interesting exercise actually oh okay great it sounds like i can actually relate to it so city lodge here i come <laughs> when we can go on holiday again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that too as well so um what are the keys? So you've mentioned um, how this, uh, this campaign was executed, but looking at all the stuff that you actually enjoyed working on and the stuff that was quite successful, what do you think would be maybe if you could just give a few tips or just elements that create or that you can use to create a successful campaign? So um, I think I'll, I'll branch out um, from City Lodge. It's, it's one example. Yes, not a problem. Um, another campaign is probably um, like Shave to Remember, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, or Huggies Baby Marathon. 
Hmm. And in, in all those campaigns, um, or Savannah decolonized. So um, I kind of found my niche in, in integrated advertising because when I left um, Ogilvy the last time, um, I went to a digital agency for a little while and I went to learn everything about digital and it was horrible because I knew nothing and I was in the deep end. <laughs> but sometimes being in the deep end is the best way to learn. Yeah. So what I've realized is that a successful campaign doesn't matter if you're doing it for radio or online or TV. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is always about a human truth. What is, what, is, what is the product truth and how does that relate to human truth? What is your insight? Because that is, that is really the thing that, that gives the work depth and meaning. And once you have an insight, you come up with an idea. So the inside on City Lodge was, you know, people go and live with their, their family thinking it's free, but it's never free. So, um, you know, the idea was the real cost, the real cost of, of living with your, your parents. And then the next step is to understand what do I need? What are the platforms or the touch points I need to tell the story? So, um, for instance, with Shave to Remember, it was, a, uh, it was actually the idea was, you know, honor Nelson Mandela by getting the haircut, by getting a, a lion shaved in the head. So in, in, the, in the truest sense of the word, like the, the, the media was hair, it was people's heads, okay? Um, and it was told through social media and activations um, and, and film and um, all these different touch points. So as I said earlier, the big thing is like, how do you package that idea? Um, and how do you make sure that at every touch point, people get the essence of what you are trying to say? Yeah. And it's also about craft. It's all about whether it's a radio ad or a TV ad or activation. It's about taking the time and love and care. Like nothing needs to be ugly ever. It's like make it beautiful and, and make it shine. Oh, great. That's such great advice. It makes a lot of sense. And um, now we are heading to our last question. Um, so looking at the industry, what would you say are the major trends? I know that with dealing with the pandemic currently, the trends didn't really kick off the way other people thought they would kick off. But what do you think? What do you think that are the major advertising trends for 2020 still? So um, we've just finished... When we went into lockdown, it was like that first week on 21st of March. Yeah. Um, we pitched an idea to Savannah and we launched a Savannah Virtual Comedy Bar, which was a 12-week online live streamed marathon job. It was hectic. <laughs> and, um, you know, when we started uh, producing that, um, we, we were in level five, so we couldn't get cameras to uh, the comedian. We couldn't even get a green screen to them because of the, the restrictions at the time. Yeah. So we started broadcasting through Zoom. Um, and, and I think the pandemic has forced us to be quite um, innovative and creative in, in, in how we do. And we also have to reassess our standards. Things might not look great because you are broadcasting via Zoom, live streaming it through a filter onto YouTube. You know, so I think I think this year it's not gonna it's not gonna change. I think this year is gonna force us to to obviously think more digital, think more virtual, think of how to do um, traditional activations um, and events and um, communications in a kind of virtual space, mm -hmm. um, a contactless space. And I think as with um, uh, 2008, when we saw the recession, um, our budgets are, are smaller. It's, they're going to get smaller. Um, our clients have had a tough time. People are having tough times. People are not spending as much. So usually South Africa actually really thrives creatively because we are used to constraints. So sometimes when the constraints are really tight, it forces you to think differently and to actually make leaps. Um, um, as an industry. Mm. So I think for this year, we're going to see a lot of digital work. We're going to see a lot of interesting um, executions um, 
um, maybe audio based um, and online film. And um, we're gonna like get scrappier. I think you're gonna make a plan. You're gonna like have to um, like spook and pluck your way, yes. you know, your way into an execution. So I think I think we're in for an interesting time actually. And actually, I just want to say that you know this pandemic, um, it does make you question like, oh, you know, is this really what I chose to do with my life? What value am I adding? I'm making banner ads. I should be a doctor. I should be finding a vaccine. I should be helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think for the first time in a long time, um, the value of our industry, you can see, because with every product that we sell now, we save a job. It literally is. Like, um, I, I work on Savannah and Distel, and they couldn't, sell, they couldn't sell alcohol for nine weeks. Um, you can imagine, like, that was unthinkable, like, in January, like, um, that your product would just one day disappear. And I think that um, it's in those times that brands that have meaning and purpose um, really kind of shine because they, if you take the product out of the equation, what's left and what, what value can you add to people? Um, so with Savannah was like, we understood that comedians were suddenly not having gigs. They were not having no income. So we had to support them by giving them um, paying gigs, but also we understand the value of laughter, especially in this like stressful time. Um, So I think you're going to see brands trying to make a difference in in whatever way. It doesn't always have to be a a serious way, Um, but trying to uplift people, trying to encourage people, trying to motivate people. Um, And so it's an exciting time, actually. Yes, it really is. Thank you so much for that insightful piece of the question that was very it was really well packed and it touched on a lot of things and i just want to keep this right over here and thank you so much Steph, for uh making time out and spending some time with us uh and keep safe and stay at home thank you very much keep safe and right. wear a mask and bye, bye. thank bye. you bye.